Ah, we got it. Figured it out. <laughs> I don't know what happened, but we figured it out, and it's recording. <laughs> okay, cool. So, um, hi. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a while since I've been using Zoom, so this is the second time I'm using it. <laughs> yeah, I, I've been using it, but I've never been the host. Ah. Um, yeah. Normally, I would just um, be invited to. So. Um, so I'm like very excited. You're my, actually my first guest. Uh, Ooh, I like guest. That. <laughs> um, and for me, I, I wanted to let you know that I'm trying to build an organization that's aimed at trying to empower, um, uh, both the neurodiverse community and the, the community of people with disabilities, right? Nice. And so I've followed your journey a while. I've know that you've been you've hosted you had a, a radio show on campus yes eight years almost yeah eight years. <laughs> i've known you've also i think you've had the mayor on your your I show had, uh the former mayor now he is the city council again so yeah. he, he he's back at the city council so now he is no more no more no more former mayor he is jim deer so <laughs> It's very cool. I know you've also won awards. I think your radio show has done awards as well. If I am I correct? Um, we have actually. I've been to the um. What is it? Is it not the Grammys? Not ah. It was one of the award stores that I can't remember. But I was helping. I was doing an event with them, so they asked me to help, and I got to hold one of those big, huge Emmy awards, and that was kind of exciting. That was. Ooh, a couple of years ago. Yeah. yeah. And I, I, was, I was watching. You've done a lot of amazing things. And Thank following you. your story, it's very, very inspiring and empowering. So I believe the best way to start is to explain to the audience, what what is your disability? What disability do you have? Oh, well, I've got multiple disabilities. So do you want me to start at the beginning of my childhood and then work my way up? or? Yeah. That actually will give people context, but yes. All right. So I was born with a congenital heart defect called severe trachelogy of fellow. And basically my heart is shaped like food. I don't know if you've seen it on Facebook, but I have posted several different types of hearts because it is heart month and we're celebrating heart awareness month. And so I've had three open heart surgeries. Oh, wow. Um, I've got my list right here. Um, the first one when I was like two years old. Oh, yes. And I had, uh, they had to basically do, it's kind of like a, a car. You, leaky valve, I call it a leaky valve. So that's what they did. They had to replace it. And so that was a, this, the sec, the, when I was two. And then when I was five, I had another one. And then I was 13. That was my last open heart surgery. So I have had three. And there's other people who have more than uh, operations who have this this uh, this syndrome that I have. I didn't realize that I had the syndrome until I was 32 at Harbor College. Ooh. Yes. But the doctors knew, but they didn't tell my parents about it. They wanted me to be different. So wow so you had three open heart surgeries and you didn't know no you know about the surgeries but you didn't know about the disability i didn't know about the syndrome oh, okay yeah um i was also known um a blue baby lack of oxygen that went to the brain that i almost died a couple times okay. uh, you gotta remember 1978 they didn't have the technology that they do now yes so and i was born on an air force base Yes. So you have I, the military. Yes. Yeah. So I've come from Arizona to here because they have the technology, you know. Yeah. So, and then um, I've also had cleft palate because my my palate was so small, words were mm -hmm. not coming out of my my uh, voice. So yeah. they had to do surgery on my uh, cleft palate. And so now I'm able to speak. Before I was gibberish. I would point to what I want. 
So yeah. um, I'd had speech therapy. I also had uh, tubes, ear tubes in my ears because I had uh, trouble with my ears. I now have hearing aids. Before. Okay. Wow. Yeah, I've been through a lot. Um, and then, like I said, when I was diagnosed at the age of 32, that's when I found out I had 22Q. And um, a lot of people are asking, what is 22Q? There, yes. is, there is multiple names for that. I mean, there, this paleocardial facial syndrome, mm -hmm. uh, D. George, but I think you've probably heard the most of D. George and 22Q, but we're trying to keep it the same. So 22Q, it's the second most common to Down syndrome. Yeah, I heard that. I heard it was deletion syndrome. Yeah. Your chromosomes. It's a tight, it's a little tiny piece of a chromosome, and it has over 200 symptoms. So you've got heart disease, you've got kidney problems, teeth issues, schizophrenia. Um, mm -hmm. But every person who has it is different. There's, they're not the same, and they do phenomenal work. I mean, they they are ballerinas. They have their own business. They have, uh, you know, they step outside the box and they want to do more. So we're trying to get the word out about 22Q, and then I'm gonna backtrack it a little bit because of my medical history. I've also had a grandma seizure, which actually was a uh, I had a brain infection that went to that caused me to have a grandma seizure at the age oh, of 17 wow. and I was in a coma for a week suffered brain damage so now because of that the regional center has put me as intellectual disability you know okay. and um, I am with the help of school I got, was able to get my degree in the Harbor College it took me 12 okay. years Okay, but still, a degree is still a degree. Yes, yeah. And then, um, then fast forward, I decided that I wanted to try Cal State Vegas. And my mom, yeah. she's very overprotective. She's like, I don't know if you could do this. I don't know if you could do this. So I got a, I had to step outside. And with the help with the radio station and getting my foot out there, I found that I had a voice for those who don't have a voice in the community. And yes. So, now my chance is to give back to the community. I work, I'm going to be working as the advisory committee. Okay. Regional center. Okay. So I'll be working with state disability councils. So I'll be helping them with their policies and all that stuff. And I'm looking forward to that. Um, a lot, a lot of, I get a lot of help. I okay. Get, I get uh, extra time and a half. Um, uh, and actually some of the counselors at Cal State Dominguez was very nice. They let me do my test at KDHR. So yeah, because that's how some people don't know the resources that are available to them. I didn't know any resources when I went to Cal State Dominguez. I didn't have no clue what I was doing. And then they, they threw me into human services as a president. I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I love this story but you know I want to for anybody who's actually watching this you know because I meet a lot of people within this community who you know they don't know what's next right, they, they're, right. they're stuck in this idea like I'm disabled I don't have I don't have much I can do what can I do right and what I love about your story is that you you went through it all right you went from you know having a heart surgery to you know, having your speech therapy to being um, diagnosed or being given intellectual disability, right? right? So you said it took you 12 years to finish your degree and then you went to Dominguez? Mm -hmm. It took me another five years for that, yep. So 17 years of schooling, right? Am I correct? Mm -hmm. Can you kind of give people a little like more information about how the process was with school and like why it took you so long? Well, because I have a learning disability and it takes me a little bit to comprehend certain things. Yes. So I have to get the extended time and help. And mm -hmm. I, I sit down with my professors. I sit down with the counselors at any school I go to. And mm -hmm. I say, okay, what do I need to do to, in order to pass? And yeah. um, to be honest, I had to, as on academic probation, about a couple times. You know, okay. one point, there was one point my professor goes, 
why should we keep you at Cal State Dominguez? Yeah. Yes. And I said, I'm a very hard worker. I, you know, I want to stay here. I'm almost done. And he goes, I'm going to give you another chance. So he gave me another chance. And he goes, prove me wrong. And I have to keep proving people wrong in time and time again. So yeah. it's those little baby steps and those mm -hmm. obstacles. And I have two parents who who push me to do better. That's you very know? good. Yeah, I'm my only child. So mom and dad can't have, the, they, didn't, they wanted, but mom wanted 13 kids, but she only had me. So, um, <laughs> but yeah, it, it, it's, it's a struggle. Um, I have um, comprehensive issues, learning okay. issues. Um, like I said. You mind for people who, you know, so for somebody who uh, maybe like went through school, right? And they're struggling. Right. Could you give them a little bit more details of like how you're struggling so then they can kind of relate to you a little bit more? I have dyslexia. I know some people have dyslexia. Yeah. Um, so what I do is I go to the special services and I sit down with them and I say, okay, this is what I have issues. I have, I need help. Mm -hmm. And there are some people who are afraid to get help. And yes. so and they don't know the resources. I didn't know the resources when I went there, you know. I didn't know who to talk to. So I kind of just maneuvered stuff back and forth. Mm -hmm. The best advice I can tell people is ask for help. Because that bottom line, that's what's going to help it, you know. I, I've i actually, I know somebody very dear to me who actually went to help. Um, they were diagnosed with autism and bipolar disorder. And the counselor told them there was no hope for them, um, right? Yeah. And so, you know, this is why I'm very intrigued because you said 12 years. And so this person, they dropped out of college because they felt like there was no hope. So I'm kind of curious, you know, after the first year, second year, what kept you motivated to keep going? It's just a learning because I wanted to learn more. I didn't, I didn't want to be, you know, felt sorry. I wanted to do more. I felt yeah. like I was like everybody else, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm not like, oh, I have a disability, yeah. But I wanted to be just like everybody else. And I know it's a struggle, but you tell that person, don't give up. Tell them to go to a different college and get help. Okay. And don't let that other person or person tell you you can't do anything. No. My dad says the word can't is not in my vocabulary. So. Yeah. Yeah, and I, my biggest point right now is writing everything down because I've, I've been forgetting a lot lately. Um, so I just have a hard time understanding and processing certain things. So they suggested me writing down and I refuse to write stuff down. <laughs> so, he is perfect, but you know, we go with that. Um, but so sex doesn't happen overnight. It happens gradually and people need to understand that people with disabilities have special skills and they need to see it more often that's how I feel yes so. totally agree so so going back to your story because it's very interesting like 17 years and I'm you know for me myself that's wonderful right I love somebody who you know is like I want this is going to happen this is mm -hmm. just going to happen you know uh, so you you got through the college, you went to your counselor. Every time you had a struggle, right, you went and you went to find your resources. How did you find out about your resources? By accident. I talk by, accident. To, by talking to people, getting to know them, uh, you know, finding out what's available to me, you know. I didn't know anything about SSI. Wow. And my parents didn't know anything about SSI growing up, so... Mm -hmm we found out the hard way. And I'll give an example about that. Uh, I had a judge who told Social Security, they denied me three times and they were gonna deny me again because they didn't see the whole picture. Yeah, so, so, stop there. I'm so sorry, we have to go through this part because this is really important. Because um, I know a lot of people, like people, especially for the children that I work with, their families who are going through it, mm -hmm. um, they've been trying to get on disability, right? Okay. Right. And they get denied. And so they feel that once they get denied, their chances are over. 
no, 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 no. What you do is get a lawyer and you'll get denied three times. Trust me. Make sure you get a lawyer. And if you have a judge that's willing to work with you, in my mm-hmm. case, it did in my favor. He said that Social Security they see the whole picture. Okay. They need to see the whole picture, not just she's physically able, she could do the work. But at mm-hmm. one point, that's what yeah. they need. You know, that's what they need to see. You know what I mean? If that yeah. makes sense. That does make sense. Yeah. And I tell my I tell people like that all the time on Facebook that they're 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 having the same issues. I yeah. can't get it because they're not recognizing 22Q as a disability or autism or any of that. So, yeah. and I said, well, you just gotta be patient. You just gotta fight it. Keep on fighting. Keep you know doing what you need to do. And yes. it, it's hard because I know certain states are different. The mm-hmm. California. So Everybody's I don't. Really know. It. Yeah. We're more progressive, I would say. Yeah, and for me, for what happened with how I got tested was, like I said, I got turned down, and the regional center told me to go take a genetic testing of fish. That's okay. how. The, that's how the ball got going from twenty two Q. Okay. Yeah. So you were, so you would say for anybody who you know, is getting into this world, right? Because I I would say that this is a whole different world, right? Because, you know, um, it's not that you're not able to do things, you just need a little bit more support and some help. Mm -hmm. So would you say the first step in getting help is going to regional center? Um, any, you could go to regional center. Um, if you have your documents, Mm -hmm. like your IEP meetings or whatever, keep those, because I'm going to give, give you a little tip SSI has a hard they they claim they lose stuff <laughs> I physically walked in my paperwork my mom and I walked in my paperwork three times and they misplaced it yeah I can see that they're busy yeah they're very busy we had hard copies everything we had everything lined out oh we can't find it we misplaced it yeah put it on CDs put it on a flash drive put it on Whatever you can, scan it, you know, back it up, keep backing it up if you can. So now I'm, I'm a little bit curious um, with SSI helping you, so you stumbled, stumbled upon it. How did you pay for school? How are you making your incomes? Well, I'm only, with SSI, I'm only getting a $600 a month. Not mm-hmm. enough. Um, I was able to get financial aid from school, scholarships. So... Um, How did you find your scholarships? I went online and there were people at school who helped me, uh, you know, told me about scholarships and stuff like that. So I actually won a couple of scholarships. So that's good. Um, when you went online, did you go to specific, a specific website or did you do fastweb.com or? I did fast, did but, yes, I did that. And then, like I said, some of the scholarships were at Harlow College. So yeah. I. I submitted that, no problem, and uh, it got picked. I'm like, oh, okay. And then the foundation that I'm with, um, I was able to get a, a scholarship for that $2,000 scholarship. Okay. So 20, the 22Q Family Foundation has scholarship money for kids who want to go to school. Okay. So every year is they pick, I think, three or four people. Okay. And depending on... Mm, the amount of the money is that it'll go towards college. So, yeah. yeah. So that's basically what they do. They pick three or four out of thousands of people. And so uh, the 22Q Family Foundation was started by a a Boston Red Sox pitcher, Brian. Mm -hmm. You can look him up online. His daughter has... 22 years uh, at the time, I believe she was five years old. Yes. Yeah. I, so. I don't know how old she is now. So <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking I was reading about it. So yeah, you're right. It, it, I mean, it, it, it's grown. I mean, slowly but surely, people are recognizing 42 Q11 for what it is. And um, if you see these kids, these kids are phenomenal. They have special talents. They do baseball. They do cheerleading. 
um, graphic designs, you know, um, but they don't want, they don't have their mindset. They want to keep going. You know, yeah. they, ask, they ask me this all the time. What's your secret? I go, because I want to just keep going. You know, I don't yeah. know. I didn't think I was going to be really good at the radio, you know, and yeah. I've gotten guests like Marion Ross on the show from Happy Days. I've gotten wow. Don Wells from Gilligan's Island. Wow. Uh, Florida Swift. <laughs> from, just a couple weeks ago. I actually branched out, well, because I moved up here at Knoxnard. And I started my own uh, remote access now. So I reached out. I was able to get Marion Rock, like I said, uh, Don Wells, Loretta Swift. I'm working on a couple of guests right now for the show. And I had been sick with bronchitis. So it, it it's, you know, takes our time, but I'm getting back together, you know. And I figured out how to convert this beat this the the video into an mp3 and i could post it up on my web on the podomatic so that's that's something steven never taught me so <laughs> and i told him like he goes well good job <laughs> so <laughs> yeah you know, with the, so why i'm very very excited coming up with everything is that i noticed with the newer technologies coming out there's a lot more opportunity for everyone to have an equal playing field, right? Mm -hmm. And that's what's really, really new. That's beyond exciting for me to hear. Um, and then the reason why I'm very even more excited is because within this community, I realize that like the potential is nearly limitless, right? right. And so, like right now, you're telling me you have your own podcast. You got guests from you know popular TV shows, and you know you graduated college and you're not stopping and you know it's this beautiful beautiful thing where it's like you're you feel how do you feel well you know i look at it this way i always tell kids they see me and the parents they say i want my kids to do that but they keep them in a bubble and they're afraid to go you know go outside that little bubble but you gotta let them spin their wings that's the only way to do it you just gotta keep all if they're gonna fall down you know that's basically how you look at it you yes know? and that's why i was as you know because i know within the intellectual disabilities there's a movement called neurodiversity right where it's respecting people with um different um mental neurological frameworks that um so that so that they can get past that right right and so my question is do you feel like you're disabled or do you feel like like, what do you feel? Tough question. <laughs> That's a very good yeah. question. Um, there's certain days I could do certain things really well, and then you'll ask me the next day to do it. I won't. I can't. I won't be able to do it. And so, it's just your body, your mindset. You have your good days. You have your bad days. You know. Yeah. And it's it's sad and um. I know I have issues and nobody's perfect. We all, my dad says we all have mental health issues. Yes. Some of us are more crazier than others. <laughs> <laughs> it's just it's just how you handle it. You know what I mean? Yes. So um like even our president of the United States, he has mental health issues. I'm just saying, you know, you know. <laughs> We can't say it. <laughs> no, no, no. it. It just says all people, all different races have issues. Whether they yeah. want to accept it or not, that's their problem. You know what I mean? Yeah. So then you wouldn't, so I think, so let me like step back. When I, when I was asking, how do you feel? I, I, I was more wondering in the terms of like, what stops you? What do you feel will stop you? from reaching your dreams? What well, stops me? Hmm. I can't think of anything right now. <laughs> I have to get you back on that one because that's a good question because I can't think of, you know, um, well, my biggest fears right now is writing stuff down. I got to get better at writing stuff down. Mm. And uh, like my dad says, even Albert Einstein writes st stuff down. So, <laughs> Um, yeah, that's my biggest fear is writing stuff down and remembering it. 
because it's the, the thought process like not yes. so good for that don't ask me how i did the radio station all these years but you can ask steven i was his most difficult internship intern of all time so <laughs> <laughs> um and you know i've learned a lot i've also learned um that you can't be like everybody else you have a special uniqueness and um what do you call it mindset you know mm -hmm. And there are people willing to help you, but you got to help yourself first. You know? Wow. Okay. So I, I love, I, so, you know, I love that you said that, right? Because I don't know, I know you know this within the community and I know I've met many people and there's this ideology of, um, I don't want to say the word specifically, but when you tell somebody with a disability to help themselves, they almost feel like you're, you're leaving them alone, right? They feel like they're, from what I've been told is that you're disabling them by trying to tell them to try to help themselves. No, no, okay. no, because you have, they have got to want it. Yeah. They've got to want it. If they want to succeed in life, they got to have to do it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've struggled. I've had all my ups and downs. I've had, uh, sheesh, how many operations, how many surgeries, and how many, I'm still kicking. I mean, I've been told that I wouldn't make it to my 21st birthday. I'm 43 years old. It's going to be 44 in April. And I'm like, you know, I want to get my master's. And um, it's just right now my grades suck and I need to bring them up back up. So that's where I'm working at right now. But I always <laughs> tell this to people, don't give up. Yeah. If there's a skill that you like, go for it. Don't t don't let anybody tell you different. That's just <laughs> basically how <laughs> That's so wonderful to hear. I um cuz you know, I did ABA. I was yeah. I I work with um people with um a severe intellectual disability and severe physical disabilities as well. I work, and I'm a caregiver for intellectually disabled, and I love my uh, my individuals. I work, you know, I've worked publicly and private. I've been working in home care and I work in group care. And you know, sometimes I used to have conversations with parents about their children's future, and I've always said that their children can be whatever they want to be with the right mindset. Right. 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 And I've found even I've met people in wheelchairs who are like just phenomenal players you know athletes and i'm just like wow and so i when i was first trying to explain this to people it felt like we were saying that they shouldn't they shouldn't ask for help when in reality is this is no you should still ask for help but you should also try to do stuff for yourself and yeah, i hope but... that's what you're going to say right right it, it's the little things i mean yeah you know there's resources available but there's sometimes they're afraid to ask for the resources because yeah. they want, you know they want to be i guess they don't know how to ask they're in that yeah. level and that's where they have the issues you know yeah like i said nobody's perfect you know um but it just depends. I mean, you've got to want it in order yeah. to succeed in life. Just, yeah, yeah there's going to be ups and downs. There's going to be failures. And then there's going to be people telling you're stupid. And I hate this word, retarded. I really hate that word. I don't like yeah. it. That does, that, that. Does not do justice. Uh, yeah. Um, it, it, it's just mind boggling because people see you and then, they said, oh, there's nothing wrong with you. Yeah, I hear that a lot, too. Um, and, yeah. And then, so what do you do? You go, you show up, show up. I had my ex-husband, he says, college is not going to do any good, get it, get it good for you. You're stupid. Blah, 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 blah. You know what? I'll show you. Then I showed him. Speaking of your ex-husband, you got married. So, you know, that's another thing I know I hear a lot about, right? Right. You got married and you got divorced, you know, and I would love to hear your 
mindset around relationships? You take, it's, it's like the facts life song. You take the good, you take the bad. As you know, it's all about the facts of life. That's how I look at it. <laughs> move on, you know? I just recently got broken up with my ex-girlfriend uh, mm -hmm. because it was the long distance relationship thing. She didn't want to commit. And so I'm like, okay, you know what? Bye. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're still friends. And mm -hmm. so it just didn't work out. And so, you know, I think right now with me doing working with the regional center and working with the state disability, it's going to make me more aware of different policies that are going on and stuff like that. So who knows? I'm hopefully maybe it'll land me a state job and uh, up there in Sacramento to see me working with Congress. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm rooting for you for sure. I actually was wondering, how did you get the advocacy program? Like, how are you able to do all of the getting all these opportunities? Friends actually tell me about it. I have good uh, support group. And okay. so my friend told me to reapply for a regional center up here again. Okay. And um, I actually got accepted this time because of that brain infection that I told you I got. They added a new category. So I did, oh, wow. not, I did not know that because back then it was like 10 years ago. I think what, yeah, 10 years ago. Uh, I got denied because I was on the borderline. I wasn't really at that point intellectual disability. You know what I mean? So yeah. once I had that brain infection, everything just gradually, slowly, you know, fell into place. If that yeah. makes sense. That makes sense. So then I would say, I would also say that you're noticing that most policies are changing and most resources are changing. Even our medical information you know, yeah. updating yourself. Yeah. So. And the one advice is, I say is make sure you understand the resources a little bit better. Just okay. you know, go out there and do what you need to do and do it better. Yes. And, would, would you say that from, from like now, from back then, like what's the biggest change you've noticed? Technology. Technology? Yeah, because I use a smart pen, and mm -hmm. I, back then when they didn't have smart pen. What was a smart pen? What was an iPad? We didn't have iPad, you know, back in yeah. the eighties or nineties. We had what? MySpace. We've had, you know, <laughs> we had, we didn't have Zoom. We didn't have any of the technology. Yeah. I know I'm very, very, like, there's so much newer technology, like, I'm excited for virtual reality, I'm excited for AR, I'm actually talking to people right now about, like, there's an app that someone's making that's aimed at, because you, with people that have autism, yeah. uh, they're a little, most of them have an obsessiveness, uh, some of them have an obsessiveness with conversations, right, so they like to obsess over something. And I've always been believed that when you are neurodivergent, you should have a modified lifestyle. So a lifestyle that fits your needs versus right. you having someone else's needs. So there's an app that's made for people with autism to socialize about their obsessiveness. Like yeah. they're, they're obsessed. So the app is built around like, if you have a topic you're obsessed with, find someone else who's obsessed with it too. And now you guys can socialize, right? Yeah, versus yeah. them trying to figure out how to socialize. Right. So I'm very excited about that. Um, have you heard about Caltash, the conference that is happening in March? Uh, Caltash? I have uh -huh. not. I have to send you the app, the, the, the resource for that, but it's up in Sacramento and you get to meet with your different uh, state disability council members that up there. It, I heard it's really good. I'm going to be trying to go in up there in March and they give you different more resources and stuff like that. So um, <laughs> it's going to, I think, it's March 6th. I got to look at the date again, but I'll definitely send you the information. Yeah, definitely send me more of the information. I know about the Ability Expo that's happening in February this month. Oh, but yes. I'm very I wanted, to go. I wanted to go to that. And if you go, it happen yet. it's going to happen. So if you go, look for my friend Donna Musa. Yeah. She's in a wheelchair and she's phenomenal. <laughs> I know I'm very 
like this year I, I want to watch the wheelchair races because I'm excited to see, like the wheelchairs themselves have been upgraded well she's in yeah so but she's actually uh Donna my friend Donna she actually got a a uh what do you call those awards the cavity awards this past week yeah so she's phenomenal and um i got to interview her about a couple of months i wanted to go to the uh, ability expo i don't know if i'm going to be able to i'm just getting over being sick um but yeah it sounds you know uh you were talking about autism cody he won there mm-hmm. god talent you know yeah i was i was i'm looking at a lot of these people right because this is where i i may there just to give like a better context of where this community is growing and yeah. where we're going right there is people they, they've built artificial limbs that are starting to look more and more human right, right. there's people with autism that are learning how to manage their symptoms mm-hmm. in a way that still works for them not right. changing themselves but managing their systems even very very even uh neurodivergent people that have more of a have more because there's certain neurodivergent people that have more more motor and neurological um infections in their brain mm-hmm. um we're finding that they're able to i'm seeing i don't this is not scientific i am not certified i am not a doctor but from what i've been seeing is that you see the improvement in both their everyday life right because yeah. california has is closing most of their state hospitals and their integrative the community at a better scale and we're understanding this population a lot better so we're able to give them a better quality of life there is a lot of exciting things happening and so i'm very very excited about this next venture you know and I, that's why i was like let me reach out to you because i know you have a lot of resources because oh, you like really I, said, I, did, I, did, I found them all by accident don't ask me <laughs> <laughs> but i also have, I have but that's my thing is is that you found these things not by like sitting around being like oh my gosh but you went out your way looking for them in my friend i also have friends that actually tell me about them you know yeah, yeah. And, and my friend christian told me about this advocacy program or region you know regional advisory committee and like she goes try it see what happens i'm like okay so, and, so you're stumbling upon opportunities after opportunities because you're open-minded am i right, correct right and you're but you're also are you looking for opportunities or are you just i'm hoping to get opportunities i mean they sometimes fall on my lap and it's just amazing me and give you an example i was on a commission board for city of carson i didn't i didn't know what i was doing did you say (laughs) you want to be a part of the commission board i'm like uh okay again they threw me into the fire i'm like "Uh, i don't have no clue what i'm doing i'm like okay i'll go and uh say with president of um, human services they told me to be president i'm like you're asking the wrong person i don't know nothing about this stuff you know and, just mm-hmm. like, and then and then the same professor that was going to kick me out of cal state the biggest next year he saw me he goes you're doing a fantastic job with the um, human services club good job it's like thank you i told you to give me a chance you know and i'm like it was radio station it is like you know, you just gotta give them a chance. That's all. I, you know, and I, I love that. I love, I know that there are, you know, my question always comes back to, um, you're building your skills, right? Like you, I know you're a part of a lot of, of organizations. I saw you when you were in a radio show. I, you know, I've seen, I've watched your show. I've been on your show actually a long time yeah. ago. Um, that's how I met you, and I met somebody else. I can't remember. Cody. Co- yeah, him. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so it's phenomenal the things that are happening and i am very think uh grateful that you actually you know took the time today to talk to me and you know well, i'm just like gonna, you know huh? i wanted to meet up with you last week but i like i said i had no voice I had, because i was sick with bronchitis since christmas after christmas and i was it's crazy wasn't last it was january last month well, I had a sinus infection that went into bronchitis, and so oh, okay. my mom had bronchitis, my dad had bronchitis, all three of us had it at the same time, and it was weird. Do you get sick a lot? People with uh, 22Q has a weak immune, auto, autoimmune um, immune system, 
So yeah. any viruses, any flus, we, mm -hmm. and if we're around people like that, like that. Yeah, I, I kind of figured. So I know you were always, when I saw you, you were, you were always sick. And the reason I brought that up is because, <laughs> the reason I brought that up was because I know people who will tell me, um, but Raven, you don't understand. I have this going on. I have that going on. And I'm like, you could still do it. You just have to take it at your own pace. Right. right? Yeah. And when you're telling me you're sick, I was like, perfect. Because I want you to know that you, what you may need is an accommodating schedule to help you. And I'm glad we were able to go at your own pace. Yeah. But, <laughs> so, but I wanted to actually let you go. Because yes. I know people are going to be 40, for like 40 minutes, and I think it's already, I guess, 45 minutes. That's right. <laughs> so, uh, if you could, uh, you know, I I'm really, really grateful, and I will talk to you soon. Yes, and I will send this over to you as soon as I'm done after I'm done eating. Okay. And I will, okay. I will see you later. <laughs> Bye. Bye.